to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said with conviction, unless you believe that I'm he, you will surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse number 24. We welcome you today to our study of more about Jesus. Today we're thinking about the convictions of Jesus Christ. What are some things that Jesus felt passionate about, that he was absolutely convicted on, and what type of things should Christians be convicted about today if we're going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus? And so we're so glad you joined us for our lesson today. We want to encourage you to locate your Bible and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God as we study about the convictions of Christ today. Friend, we want you to know this lesson as well as all of our lessons are brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the Lord's Church or why we worship the way we do or the teaching of the Bible on salvation, you'll find people at the Church of Christ who'd love to sit down, open up the Bible, and discuss the Scriptures in a kind and loving way with you. And so visit the Lord's Church in your area. Look them up on their website, phone book, however it may be, and you can find their information in your local area. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your desire to know God and His Word better. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a wide variety of good Bible study material available, available from our website, and it's all free of charge. If you'd like to have a video of today's lesson or any of our lessons, an audio copy, written transcripts, study questions, we've got a host of Bible study material, and it's all available to you free of charge. As we said, if you'd like to have a hard copy of our lesson today in audio or video form, you can go to our website, fill out a media request form, and we can send that to you in the mail free of charge. And we hope that in our fast-paced world today, where nearly everybody has a smartphone, that you'll download the Gospel of Christ app, both for Android and Apple, from the respective stores there. And that's a great way to study the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. Let's now turn our thinking as we consider more about Jesus in this series of lessons toward the convictions of Jesus Christ. What is it Jesus was convicted with passion about? What are some things that really stood out about what Jesus said and what he stood for? I want to begin in Matthew chapter 5, in verse number 19, by realizing that Jesus was convicted on how to be great in his kingdom. Look in your Bible in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 19. How, do you, how can you be great in God's kingdom? Here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 19. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Now listen to this. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. How are we going to be great in God's kingdom today? Greatness is not necessarily about our, our power. Greatness is not necessarily about our, who we are or our, how many followers necessarily a person has. If you want to be great in the kingdom of the Lord, it's not physical might, it's not those kind of things. Who's greatest in God's kingdom? Jesus said of His commandments, whoever does them and teaches others to do them is going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. Two ways. Jesus was convicted of about being great in God's kingdom. Number one, you've got to do God's commandments for yourself. Friend, you can't be great in the kingdom of God 
and not follow God. Luke 6, 46, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Uh, Hebrews 5, 8, and 9, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. If there's one thing that's clear from the mouth of Jesus is that you must obey His teaching to be great in His sight. Listen to this simple statement. Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Friend, that's greatness in God's kingdom, for the first part of it anyway. Doing right by obeying God in our lives. Secondly, he who does and teaches others to do them. If I want to be great, not only do I need to be a good follower of God myself, I need to teach somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark 9, verses 36 through 38. Jesus looks out on the multitude and he says, Truly, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of hosts. He'll send out laborers into his field or his harvest. Who are those laborers? We are. Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, verse 18. We need to be that watchman who warns and teaches others about the good news of Jesus Christ. And so you want to be great in God's kingdom? Obey God. Do your best to teach the gospel to other people. That's who Christ considered as great. Secondly, as you think about some things Jesus was deeply convicted about, one of those was uh, the need for us to confess Jesus in our life. Look at Matthew chapter 10. I want you to listen to the conviction of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Jesus said, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now, friend, this idea of confessing, I understand initially that a person has to make the good confession. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 following, Acts 8, verse 37, Romans 10, 32 and 33. I understand that we've got to confess Christ as Lord and Savior, but it doesn't stop when we obey the gospel. Confessing Christ is a way of life not just a one-time action. Luke 9, verse 23, Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's what it means to confess Christ, not just with your words, but by the way you live your life. Am I willing to stand side by side with the Lord, no matter what it may cost me? The disciples were in the first century. Acts 4, verse 13, when they stood up, and boldly proclaimed, nor is there salvation in any other. This would cost them being put in jail and being beaten. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The Bible says in Acts 4 verse 13, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and they realized they were untrained or uneducated men, then they realized they had been with Jesus. They were confessing Christ not just with their words, but by the way they live their life. And friend, that's something Christ was convicted about. Jesus said, you won't confess me? Look, I'm not going to confess you either. You will confess me? I'll tell God you're one of my children. And so the way we do that is by living a life that pleases God, no matter how good or how bad of the consequences uh, may be because of that. And then I want you to consider this with me. Another thing Jesus was convinced about, Jesus was convicted on how to be a part of God's family. I want you to take your Bible and look at Matthew chapter 12, verse number 50. Jesus was convicted on how to be a part of God's family. Let's begin reading in Matthew chapter 12, verse 48. Up to this point, they've said to Jesus, your mother and your brothers are here to see you. Verse 48, Jesus answered and said to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, here 
are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. You know, we hear a lot today about being a part of the family of God. And, and that's great. We want people in God's family. God wants people in His family. And yet Jesus was convicted on how to be a part of God's family. Imagine this scenario. Jesus is sitting around teaching and His family, His physical family comes to see Him. And He's teaching. Everybody's engaged in that. But somebody in the crowd must have noticed that His mother and brother and sister are standing around waiting. And so they kind of stop Jesus and they say, Lord, do you not care that your mother and your brother and sister are here? Jesus said, wait a minute. He looks around and he says, these are my mother and brother and my sister. He stretched out hand and says, everybody right here today who is following God's will is my mother, brother, or sister. Whoever does the will of God, Jesus said, is the family of God. Friend, when we think about family, that's such an important idea. How can you be a part of God's family? Jesus knew how. You've got to do God's will to be a part of God's family. It isn't enough. Listen to this now. It isn't enough just to mouth words. It isn't enough to look up into heaven and say, Lord, Lord. It isn't enough to say, I'm a child of God and, and toot your own horn and say, I'm a Christian. Jesus said, not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord's going there. He who does the will of my Father in heaven. You really want to be a part of God's family? Do what God says. Obey His word. Keep His commandments. Stay true to His teaching. Do your best to live a life that brings glory and honor to God in every way. Then Jesus was convicted on how to save your life. And this is kind of a paradox. Jesus said these words. Look in Matthew chapter 16. How do you save your life? Here's something Jesus was convicted about. Verse number 25. Jesus said, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Now listen to this. But whoever loses his life for my sake, We'll find it. How can you really make sure you save your life by losing it? Well, that doesn't sound right. You don't save something by losing it. What's Jesus talking about? Again, as we said, this is a paradox. This is a truth standing on its head to be noticed. That's what a paradox is. How do you save your life by losing it? You save your life by losing it in Christ. Life's no longer about me. When I become a Christian, Life's no longer about me, and it's no longer about you, right? 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? Now listen to this. And you are not your own. What do you mean you're not your own? You are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. I lose it in the sense that I lose it in Christ. It's no longer about me. It's no longer about what I want. It's no longer about my passions and desires and having every fun and fulfilling every desire and lust. You save your life by losing it when you lose your life in Christ, meaning I'm willing to give up for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that what Paul did? Galatians 2 verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ, Paul said. No longer I who live, Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live in by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Paul saved his life by losing it in Christ. It's no longer I who live. Then I want you to consider this idea from the life of Jesus. Here's something Jesus was really convicted about. Jesus knew how to never be hungry and never be thirsty again. Look in John chapter 4, and I want you to notice verses 13 and 14. Gospel of John chapter 4, notice what the Bible says in verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said to her, to the woman at the well, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a, a fountain of water springing up unto eternal life. And of course, Jesus would say the same thing about food. John 6, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, uh, Jesus said, will never be hungry. And then he went on to say, my words are spirit and my words are life. He wasn't talking about cannibalism. He wasn't talking about the Lord's Supper in John 6. He was talking in both John 4 and John chapter 6 about finding real spiritual sustenance 
by bringing the teaching of Christ into our lives. You see, God's Word is the lamp to our feet, and it's our path, light to our path. It's what gives us direction. God's Word is how we get spiritual survival. You remember this, Matthew chapter 4. Jesus is hungry. He's been in the wilderness. He's there with the wild beasts. He's tempted by the devil. He's been without food for many days. And the Bible says, the devil, knowing he was hungry, said to Jesus, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. I know you claim you're the Son of God. I know you're hungry. If you're that person you claim to be, prove it, because we both know you want something to eat. Here's what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jeremiah knew that. Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah 15, verse number 16. You, could, you can eat and you can drink all you can handle, and you're going to get hungry again. You're going to get thirsty again. You want real satisfaction? You really want to be filled? Put Christ in your life spiritually. Make His teaching. A part. You want happiness and contentment and satisfaction, spiritually speaking. Bring the teaching, the life, and the principles of Christ into your life. And friend, I promise you, you'll be filled to the brim in every way. And so Jesus knew, spiritually speaking, how to never be hungry or thirsty again. Here's something Jesus was convicted about. Jesus knew how to live without dying. Look in your Bible in John chapter 11. I want you to turn to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John. And our context is that of the death of Lazarus. And in John chapter 11, verse 25, Martha said to Jesus, I know concerning her brother, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, your brother's going to rise again. She said, I know he'll rise again. Uh, Jesus said to her in John chapter 11, verse number 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus said, do you believe this? And friend, we say the same thing today. Do you believe there's a way to live your life so that you never really die? Friend, Jesus was not teaching, nor are we saying today that you'll, we found the fountain of life and that you're never going to die physically. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Lazarus has died once, he'll have to die again. But when you think about Jesus' words here, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. If we, Jesus did what nobody else, no prophet, no miracle worker, nobody else could ever do, he overcame death. He, through death, overcame him who had the power of death and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage to death. Hebrews 2, verses 14 through 16. Death is defeated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 55. And so if I'm in Christ, just like he overcame death, I can overcome death. Death no longer has the threat upon the child of God because of Jesus. How can you live in such a way that you'll never really die? By living for Jesus is the only way. All are in the grave. Listen to these words. John 5, verse 28 and 29, Jesus said, All who are in the grave will one day come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. We can have eternal life if we put our trust and our hope in Almighty God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was also convicted of the need to hear very carefully God's Word. I want you to open your Bible to Mark chapter 4 with me for just a moment and listen to Jesus' conviction about listening carefully and hearing correctly the Word of God. Mark chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Jesus said, If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then He said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And you who hear, more will be given. 
when you hear these words, that him that has ears to hear, let him hear, what's Jesus saying there? My friend, it's the same thing in Revelation 2 and 3. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. God gave us ears for a reason. Let's listen care carefully to what he said. And then Jesus goes on to say, Take heed, be careful what you hear. Not just the who, but the content of what we're listening. Are we listening to the right source? Well, let's think a little further about that. What's the source, the what? What's the source we hear today? Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The correct source is not the books of men. It's not the doctrines of men, not the commandments of men. Mark 7 clearly teaches that. Not the catechisms or the ideas of men. The what is the Word of Almighty God. That's what's able to to save your soul. James 1, 22. Uh, the gospel of Christ is what saves us. Romans 1, verse 16. And so we want to emphasize the need to listen carefully to the Word of God. Here's the big problem that occurs today. It occurred in the day of Jesus, and it occurs today. In the day of Jesus, they had thought up various ideas and commandments of men, so much so that people were neglecting the commandments of God and putting the commandments of men above that. Mark chapter 7, uh, verse 10 following. Oftentimes, that same thing happens today. When we sit down to have a Bible study, somebody will not only bring the Bible, but they want to bring a, a book written by men. And they want to bring these catechisms or doctrines of men or some teaching of some various church. Wait a minute now. What's the source again? Jesus said, You shall not live, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Take heed, be careful what you hear. Listen to the right source, and the only one that can save you is the truth. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You know, when I think about great teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and things that he was really convicted about. One of those is found in Matthew chapter 11. Jesus was convicted of the all-inclusive nature of eternal life. Open your Bible. We'll talk about it a little from Matthew 11, but I want you to look in John chapter 10, verse number 9. Open your Bible to John chapter 10. I want us to think about Jesus' conviction of the all-inclusive nature of eternal life. John chapter 10. Look at what Jesus says in verse number 9. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I'm the door. Nobody is coming into salvation except by me. And anybody who does can have eternal life. Friend, I want you to see the all-inclusive nature of eternal life through Jesus Christ. All-inclusive in the sense that the Bible says at the end of Revelation, let whosoever will come and drink freely of the water of life. God wants all men, black, white, brown, red, whatever. God wants all men, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of background, regardless of, of financial or social status. There is nothing that breaks down those barriers more than Jesus Christ. God wants all men, all inclusive, all men, to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. But it's all inclusive in this way also. Jesus is the only way. There's only one way to the Father. When, what's a door used for? If you want to get in the house, you got to go through the door. You can't run through the brick wall. You can't go down the chimney. You can't tunnel under it and get in. That's not how it's going to work. Doors give entrance into something. Jesus said, I am the door. If It's all-inclusive in that if you want to get to the Father, 
and you want to live with Him for all eternity? Jesus was convicted. He was the way. A thief, you can't get in through the thief. He's just there to kill and destroy and, and, and do harm. Jesus is the good shepherd. Listen to these words. John 14, verse 6. Jesus emphasized, I, I am the way. I, I am the truth. I, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You can't get to God. Men can't get you to heaven. Uh, men's teachings can't get you to heaven. Some great person somewhere else. That, no. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And so, friend, we ask you today, are you a member of Christ's body? Are you a child of Jesus Christ? Have you obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior? When we listen to these convictions, one thing is certain. Jesus believed there was a right way and there was a wrong way to do things. And friend, there's a right way to be saved, and Jesus clearly taught us that. Jesus said, if you're going to be saved, you've got to trust in Him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Do you believe in Christ as the only way of salvation? Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin in repentance? Acts 3.19, Peter preached, Repent and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing or seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Would you make the good confession? Jesus said, If you won't confess me before men, Neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And if you're willing to believe in Jesus, repent of your sin, make that good confession, would you do what else Jesus was convinced about to be saved? Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts 2 verse 38. Friend, we hope you'll join us next time as we're going to study more about Jesus. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the